Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to From Next Door. Previously in From Next Door, we opened up the window, and as you expected, something really bad happened afterwards. Matsuda-san? 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 Matsuda-san, are you alright? What? What are you doing out here? You're bleeding. Thank God I'm only bleeding. I... Hey, don't rush yourself. Are you alright? What happened? I... I don't know. Come now, we can talk inside. Let's get that wound taken care of. There, that should do it. You have a nice house here. Thank you, Honda-san. Let me just tell you about my son, who I put up in the house. Two stories, I mean two, two houses down. He was a good boy, covered in tar for whatever reason. He liked to murder people too. I haven't seen him in a while. I'm waiting for that twist. That's, that'd be the typical Junji Ito twist, if I had to think of something. Always families. Matsuda-san, what happened? Why are you laying on the street like that? I tripped. You tripped? Yeah, I was running that I tripped. Why were you running? There was... something inside the house. Something. Your head feels fuzzy. You have an idea what happened that made you run out of the house, but... I'm probably remembering it wrong. That blow to your head must have gotten things mixed up. There's no way you saw what you think you saw. I, I think it was an animal? I'm not sure. My head doesn't feel quite clear. That looked like it was a nasty blow. Are you sure you don't want to go to the hospital? No, I'm fine. Really. It wasn't that bad. I still think you should go. Things like this shouldn't be played with. I'll just go tomorrow if I feel anything else. I'll be fine, Honda son. Nami! No! Why? Why? No! Even even if it wasn't a monster, even if it was an animal or a burglar or a bat or a mouse or a giant cockroach, you don't go back in the house. That's dumb. If you say so, you get the flamethrower. Then you go back in the house, and you play like a cool soundtrack, as, you know, get that Ripley thing going. Still, I insist you stay here for the night. Head wounds are no trivial matter. It's good to have someone watching over you. Watch mom come and visit me tomorrow. Hanasan, I don't want to impose. I insist. I can't in all good conscience send you home alone like this. You want to argue that's unnecessary. That you feel fine, but at this point you're too tired to argue. Thank you, Hanasan. Matsuda-san? Are you going already? Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to get that checked out? Or maybe even stay a little while longer? No, I should go. You don't want to trouble Hanasan any further. You want to go back and. Do stupid things, because you're dumb. You just want to go back and screw up your life. Just You just want to get back in that house and take in a high interest loan. You know, over credit yourself. Take out a second mortgage. Buy a new car. Put that on the credit too. Man, we're doing all of it. It's just all happening, man. It's what, what's, what's going to happen. Thanks for everything, Honda-san. Financial dokes. This is scary. It's a tar monster. Oh my god, why are we going in that house? Why are we so dumb? You step in front of the door. Your mind rushes back to the events of yesterday. Or as much as you can remember and you hesitate. Like some kind of voice is screaming at you from the sky, saying, DON'T DO IT! Also, I'm really cool! He says he's really cool. There's no way you really saw that thing. Your head's just confused because of the blow it took. Right? So why did you run out of the house yesterday? You have no business here, exactly. Oh, okay, yeah, nothing happened. The house is covered in dirty footprints. They're all over the place. Go out! There's sticky dark substance going all the way from the door handle to the table next to the door. You know, there's something else you need to check. 
Why am I so dumb? Oh man, you went everywhere. You shouldn't bother your... You shouldn't bother your friends and family. Let's not tell them about anything. Both things missing. Why am I so dumb? Oof. Oof. Pillow's ripped. Your bed's covered in footprints and your pillow's missing. I'm pretty sure we're not safe for the day. Like, it attacked us during the day last time. I mean, this this is exactly where it attacked us last time. We were not safe during the day. Why do we do this? Step back. Step back. It's gonna do it again. Yesterday. It couldn't possibly be true, could it? That creature. Rational part of your brain wants to die and chuck up that blow, chuck up that blow in your head. However, the other part of your brain, and one that can't help but entertain the idea of superstition and the supernaturally unknown, said that what happened was very much real and very much a threat. You decided to entertain that part of your brain. So far, you only know only a hand, handful of things about this thing, but nothing concrete enough for you to make an objective assertion about what it is. Speculation won't lead you anywhere, though. What you do right now is go over the facts and make sure you focus on the ones that are the most important. We don't know if either of these are true. It could come to in a day. It could surprise us. It could come from somewhere else other than the window. It could come from inside. So far, that thing has only manifested itself at night. During the day, that house's window remains firmly closed. Although, you also need to take into account the possibility that the timing might have just been, been just a coincidence. So you can't be 100% sure it won't come during the day. Still, it's better than nothing. It only comes through the window. Although you can't fathom why, it seems the only thing comes from this specific window. Daisuke Sen seemed to have thought so too, as this was the only window boarded up and the only room locked. Locking the window itself didn't do anything. Though, it managed to unlock it from the outside somehow. And that dark substance you found on the lock had something to do with it. Didn't go after you before. It didn't chase you out of the house. For some reason, it didn't pursue you when you went outside. You had when you tripped when you were knocked out. It had enough time to drag you back inside. Did it stop because it wanted to, or was it because it couldn't go outside? Or was it just another way of messing with you like it seemed to be doing before? Would leaving the house actually help? That thing came inside your house at least once before yesterday. It would have plenty of chances to come after you before, so why didn't it? What exactly does it want? It turns out you don't know much, do you? Not enough to justify the distress that's coming over you. Especially not enough to justify leaving the house without any solid evidence. There's... there's... there's tar footprints everywhere. And handprints. Your stuff is missing. You were chased out of a house. The window is open multiple times over. The evidence is there. No! There's plenty of evidence. Call the police. You have no idea what's going on, and the rational part of your brain tells you not to make any rash decisions until you can figure things out. Hell, you don't even know if you saw yesterday was real or not. All thanks to the blow to your head. You probably just got some chocolate and decided to go on a chocolate binge and just got chocolate everywhere. You just had a chocolate high. If it was real, and whatever that was comes again tonight, you should find a way to confirm your suspicions once and for all. I hate that. I don't care about suspicions. Get a shotgun. Just get a shotgun and just be done with it. Just get rid of the thing. Or a flamethrower. Just do it. Maybe you can hide somewhere and wait for it to show up. Despite feeling unsure of anything, something tells you that confronting directly would be a bad idea. Maybe you can also use something to collect some proper evidence, as if we know all the evidence all over the place. We will go down here behind here barehanded. No. We need weapons.
You know, we still have the lighter, and there is a deodorant spray. Remember what I mentioned? Let's see, maybe you can take a photo of the thing, then you have some solid evidence. Take the camera, yeah. Why do we need evidence so bad? It's so silly. It's cramped, but there's enough space for one person inside. We need the door open slightly, just enough for you to peek through the gap. This is so dumb. You can see the sunlight fading away low by little as you worry anxiously, camera ready. It's gonna be too dark to take a photo anyway. And if you use a flash, you're gonna die. I'm so frustrated. It's here. It's coming to the closet. It's coming to the closet. What you saw yesterday was true after all, and it's back. The creature suddenly throws the closet door open and grabs you by the ankle. On impulse, you flash the camera right on the creature's face. The creature stumbles back, dazed by the flash. I'll need to kick it aside and out of the way. I need to get out of here. You feel like you've made a mistake. You should have gotten out of chance when you had the chance. There's no time to dwell on that now, though. You need to go. It's got the tar on the finger, Funger! There's nothing useful. Listen. We can... Listen. No. No. Ow, ow, ow! Lighter! Obtain the deodorant spray. Ow! What? When did? I have deodorant spray. I have a lighter. Burn it. Light that baby up. Damn it. It's dragging me to the house. The orange spray. Go out. You should have to unboard behind you and lock it quickly. Even the locked door between you and the creature, you don't feel safe at all. Taking back, that thing did manage to unlock the window from the outside. But they can unlock doors too. I need to do something. Damn it. Phone is dead. Wait. You suddenly remember you have the lighter and the onion spray. Maybe you can go all solid snake. Say to light the fire. Whoopsie, I went the wrong way. That's bad. You spray fire into the substance stuck to the door. 
Surprisingly and thankfully, it was quick to combust. Once it's down the way, you push the door open and step it outside. Okay, we couldn't do this in the beginning. The creature doesn't follow you outside. You lay on the sidewalk, unmovingly staring at the house that's slowly going up in flames. The neighbors eventually start stepping outside to see what's going on. Hanasan comes rushing over to your side in worry. You vaguely note that someone must have called the fire department after they start showing up to put out the flames. It's no surprise when I take you in for questioning, considering how you were essentially holding a makeshift flamethrower on your hands. You tell them about the thing that got inside your house. Now you thought it was an animal at first, but in reality you have no idea what it was. They ask you about the wound in your head. They question how severe it was. Hanasan tells them that she doesn't know it was refused to go to a hospital. They start questioning your medical history then, and your stress-related stress episodes come to light. It gets worse when they found that even when on medical leave from work, you were still doing work-related favors for co-workers. According to them, you might have just fun up the whole thing, which you found ridiculous. Having a breakdown is one thing, but hallucinating a monster coming to get you from the house next door. Actually, you were painfully aware of how absurd that sounded, which is why you end up agreeing to those mandatory therapies such as the monitoring mental health. As long as it got you away from that house. You couldn't help returning the three months later, though. You stand on the sidewalk, gazing up at your former house. The fire did quite the damage to your house, but it seems it was already being renovated, and it wouldn't take long until it was ready to be rented again. Just, just get rid of that one window, just make it a wall. You only lived there for a week, so you don't have many memories inside it, and truth be told, you start to doubt the ones you do have. Looking back, it seems so ludicrous to think that you set the house on fire because you thought you were being chased by some kind of nightmarish creature from next door. You almost feel embarrassed by it. Still, you can't help yourself. You beat between the two houses trying to catch a glimpse at the other house's window. The wall blocking out the passage makes it difficult, but somehow you manage. There it is, the house's only window. You won't deny that it's strange. Enough to think a creature would come out to do the what? Kidnap you? Honestly. How are you doing? See you later. So we've been in the game once, and I know there's other endings, and they're a bit vague on how to get, but I have a good idea where they probably are. So the rest of this video is just gonna be me getting the various endings and kinda of showing them off. And you freak me out every time I see you. We did have a choice on the camera, so I suspect that's an ending too. Stuck. Phone is dead. All right. Wait. You suddenly remember you have the liner and the deodorant spray. Maybe you can. Back. Fire. Fire. You never mentioned the flamethrower thing? This is it. It took a while, but the creature eventually succumbed to the flames. You stood there, shocked, watching as it started thrashing around violently and smashing into furniture. 
Once you realized what was happening, you tried backing away, but your feet got caught on something and you fell down. You tried backing away, but... Despite being on fire, the creature held onto your ankle tightly, refusing to let go. Eventually, it wasn't the only thing that was on fire. You determined, little bastard. It's cramped, but there's enough space for one person inside. You leave the door open slightly, just enough for you to peek through the gap. This time we're going in the cafe without the camera, which I assume is going to be a bad ending. You can see the sunlight fading away little by little as you wait anxiously. It's here. What you saw yesterday was true after all, and it's back. The creature suddenly throws the closet door open and grabs you by the ankle. You don't have any room inside the closet to maneuver. You can't escape. Your head throbs. You open your eyes, but your vision is blurry. You feel light. You're beaten carried. When your vision goes back into focus, you find yourself staring at a window. Your window. You look down and you notice you're in the gap between the two houses. You look at who's carrying you and... Once your mind registers that the creature is carrying you into the other house, you frantically try grasping at anything you can find. Your hands grasp at the windowsill and hold it tightly, effectively halting your progress into the house. You can feel the thing pulling at your legs, trying to tug you inside. You desperately kick out, trying to free yourself from the creature's grip. When you start to feel it loosening, you tighten your hold on the windowsill and pull yourself out as hard as you can. You're halfway out the window when you're suddenly pulled back in. So I think there's a flag here, and I didn't trip it. We'll see if this is the flag. Omura-san, it's Matsuda. Ah, oh, yes. How can I help you? Something happened yesterday. Yes? I think an animal got inside the house last night. I didn't see it, but today there were footprints all over the second floor. An animal? Did it do anything? Not really. How did it get in? Through that window on the second floor. Although, I had it closed before I went to bed. That's odd. This area doesn't have any history of animal invading homes. Maybe it was a one-time incident. But just to be safe, be sure to lock everything up tonight, alright? Yeah. Worry about telling on the animal. Hello? Hey, Mom. Nami, hi. How's the new house? It's... fine. No, it isn't. What happened? It's just, something happened last night. I think an animal got inside the house. An animal? What kind of animal? Are you okay? I'm fine. I don't know what it was, 
It was gone by morning. So you didn't see it? No, I was in bed already. Well, are you sure it wasn't a dream? No, I'm sure. The house was covered in dirty footprints, and they came from an open window. I see. Well, maybe you should contact Animal Control and let them know there's a wild animal entering people's houses. It's not an animal, Mom. It's a monster. I don't know if it got into the other houses, Mom. Maybe it was just an accident. Still, don't forget to lock your windows tonight. Be safe, Nami. Oh god. Okay, so let's see if this flying trip's something different. He sprayed fire into the substance stuck to the door. Surprisingly and thankfully, it was quick to combust. Once it's out of the way, he push the door open and stumble outside. The creature doesn't follow you outside. You lay on the sidewalk, unknowingly staring at the house that's slowly going up in flames. The neighbors eventually start stepping outside to see what's going on. Hanasan comes rushing over to your side in worry. You vaguely know that someone must have called the fire department after they start showing up to put out the flames. It's no surprise when they take you in for questioning, considering how you were essentially holding a makeshift flamethrower on your hands. You tell them about the... thing I got inside your house. How you thought it was an animal at first, but in reality you have no idea what it was. They ask you about the wound in your head. They question how severe it was. Hanasan tells them that she doesn't know as you refuse to go to a hospital. Both your mother and Amorasan confirm that you talked about this animal before, though. So the police becomes less inclined to think that you made it up. In the end, you get charged with reckless behavior for nearly setting the house and the rest of the neighborhood on fire, and Furukawa housing ends up nullifying your contract to the house. That's okay, though. You're never setting foot back in there anyway. So it seems like what there really is, is like there's a few bad endings and then there's like the two good endings which have a variance depending if you... I think if you do every single story, optional, dialogue, and event, which is this ending, and there's one where you don't, where it's a little more vague. I mean, they're both vague, it's the nature of the writing, but the confirmation at the end is a little different. Honestly, what the hell is with this house? It's the second tenant already. Hello? Is anyone in there? There's no record of anyone living here. Or better, there's no record at all of anything. How is this house still here? Hello? So I guess they wouldn't mind if I... What the hell? Maybe Matsuda's son was right. I don't think I want to know what's inside. So that's it for From Next Door. The endings are vague, and they're supposed to be vague, actually. It's emulating a few specific Junji Ito stories, specifically from his kind of short horror story novels, and a little bit from Uzumaki, one specific one. And they always have vague endings, his writing. They never explain anything. They might have some light explanation for some of his stories, but for the most part, never explained. Usually kind of a cliffhanger or not fully satisfying ending. At the most, your main characters might get away. This is emulating that, like I said, so they don't explain what it is next door. You don't explain how that house has remained there or anything. You're not supposed to. It's just some weird anomaly that everyone accepts. And that's just there. Like an unexplained mystery of the world. And you don't want to live next to this house. Because obviously, it might be out of this world. 
It could very well be a gateway to hell, for all you know. It doesn't matter. All I know is there's something there that wants to eat you. Or kill you, at least. Overall, this game actually got the Junji Ito's writing style down pretty well. It has a little bit of a slow start, but this is a pretty good RPG Maker horror game. Uh, I actually was scared. Not, like, scared scared, but at least it gave me the chills as I should in a few little parts there. I mean, like, wondering, what's in that house with the window? And it did some good sound design, which is actually really rare for these type of games. Um, specifically some of the bad endings with the little steps and the breathing noise. That's really good. That's good sound design, good usage of setting up atmosphere and horror, especially considering the limited resources you have to work with for these type of games. But yeah, definitely, definitely a good horror game. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play from next door. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.